everyone welcome back to my 1086 series um, just one thing I wanted to point out real quick uh, is these clamps that I put on the fuel line um, there is actual OEM clamps for that uh, in those exact locations uh, they want there's two halves to them like you can see here there's a front half and a back half uh, even the salvage yards for uh, a set of used ones wants like 15 or 20 bucks per half uh, if they can find them. Uh, new, I want to say they're like 30, 35 bucks per half uh, for those clamps. All those clamps do is hold this line here from rubbing against anything. And this is uh, like the high pressure suction line. And so this is, you know, got a little bit of vibration to it when it's running. Uh, and so basically I just wanted to protect this line and make sure that it wasn't rubbing against anything. Uh, and so I just use P-clamps. I just got a smaller one and a larger one and a smaller one and a larger one, and I just bolted them together. Uh, it doesn't look quite as nice, um, but uh, it does the job for, I don't know what those things are, probably less than a buck a piece. Uh, so if you're looking for a cheaper way to make some fixes, a lot of times there's, there's options like that. Uh, but anyways, we'll pass on from that. Uh, the next thing that we're going to work on here is uh, sealing this clutch booster. Um, this is a hydraulic clutch booster, and uh, I've cleaned it up a little bit, so it's kind of harder to tell, but it was leaking from that bottom seal. And basically uh, what happens is uh, as these tractors get some age on them, uh, the cab mounts start to sag, and the cab starts to move a whole lot more on these tractors. And the, the hydraulic booster is mounted on the firewall of the cab, but the pivot point is mounted on the actual tractor itself. And so then what happens is this uh, this little ram takes a lot of abuse and uh, actually causes that uh, causes that that ram to start leaking um, because it's always being shaken back and forth and pushed and pried on and and there is an update kit that actually moves this pivot point up to the cab now I don't know how much that kit costs we may install it on here or may not um, because the tractor quite honestly isn't going to see that many hours uh, now but uh, we're going to get this off of here and get it resealed for sure. And uh, we'll see. What, I'll look into that kit once and just see what that kit costs. Uh, but we are starting to get up there in what we're spending on this thing. Uh, and I know Dad kind of wants to keep it in check. So maybe that'll be something that we do down the road too. But uh, for now, let's just get this cylinder off of here so we can get it apart. I'm a little bit more nervous about this one because I haven't done a lot of hydraulic repair. And there's a lot of little O-rings and seals and stuff in the kit. But we'll see how it goes. All right, so we got the booster removed from the tractor. Uh, that's where I'm going to leave it for tonight. I got to figure out how this thing comes apart. I'm sure there's a spanner wrench or something you're supposed to have to screw the ends out or something like that. But uh, who knows? I'm going to do a little bit of research, if nothing else. Uh, the, the best thing about this whole project has been uh, that my boss has worked on red tractors his whole life. And so uh, he... I mean that's what he did for a career and so he he knows everything there is to know about these things he's had every bit of them apart and worked on every bit of them in the past uh, so I should be able to get a pretty easy answer uh, as far as how that comes apart uh, and, and I'm thinking we're probably gonna end up doing that upgrade uh, I just got to figure out what that's gonna cost but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it off here and uh, we'll pick up uh, when I figure out how to get this thing Took apart. the weekend off to uh, do some snowmobiling and shear my sheep uh, and go to a toy show uh, so getting back to the tractor now and uh, I'm working on the clutch booster and uh, thank God I got that service manual because that's really helping a lot there now you should be able to see me a lot better um, so basically uh, what I need to do to get this clutch booster apart is there's a uh, there's a ring in here or a, a piece of rod that's bent around and uh, we basically just have to turn the cap and then get that rod started out of here and there's a new one that comes with uh, with the seal kit but uh, I was having a tough time uh, my snap ring pliers wasn't strong enough to get it moving and so what I did was I ended up uh, putting a couple of punches in it and then using my channel locks and that actually did work in the end uh, it's probably not the ideal way to do it, but uh, one thing I've learned uh, with the mechanics and farming and stuff like that is sometimes you just got to make something work. So I'm going to get this apart so we can get the new seals installed. So that retainer there is pretty soft, and so once I got it over here, I just bent it out, and now what it'll do is it'll follow along the outside, 
as I turn this and eventually it'll just spit it out the end and my rod will come apart. Now this is spring loaded, so the guy's got to be a little bit careful. There's the end of it. That wasn't so bad, not nearly as bad as I thought. Um, I will have to get this knuckle off of here to uh, get the innards out. So we'll go ahead and do that quick. All right, so the first thing I did was clean up this end cap here. Um, there's one of these on each end, and I believe that they're the same. Uh, but there's an O-ring on the outside, there's an O-ring on the inside, and then a wiper seal in the top. So we're going to go ahead and replace those three seals now uh, in both of these, and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. <laughs> I'm going to stop for tonight. Uh, this is the lower rod that comes out of this spool uh, and it does have quite a bit of wear on it. Uh, no doubt from uh, the cab, the whole clutch, uh, clutch deal with the cab, uh, the uh, mount that's supposed to be changed out so it's mounted to the cab instead of the body or instead of the uh, chassis. Uh, so I'm going to take this to work with me tomorrow and show it to the boss and see what he thinks. Uh, see whether he thinks it can be reused or if we should be looking at replacing this piece. Um, so that's where I'm going to end it for Hello tonight. Hello everyone, just wanted to give you a quick update. Uh, I am going to have to replace this rod. It is too bunged up and it is going to leak if I put it back together like this. Um, so this is about an $80 part, unfortunately, that's going to have to be replaced. Um, so I'm going to order that before I can finish this. But uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about quick and then we'll end this video is uh, these wear bands here. Um, this is not an O-ring. This is like a hard, harder plastic wear band. There's one on the end of this spool as well. Um, those don't flex as much as an O-ring, so they're harder to take on and off. Um, but you can work them on there. Uh, you know, they do have some flexibility to them. you got to be kind of careful. But uh, what you do then is that after they stretch, they're going to be all floppy on there. And uh, they do have memory, so then what you have to do is you have to wrap a towel around it and put a hose clamp on it like this for like 10 or 15 minutes. And it'll push that back in and get it back to the size it should be so that it fits into whatever you got to fit it into. Uh, the towel is very important, otherwise it leaves all them ridges from the, or from the hose clamp in that uh, wear band and uh, you really haven't gained anything. So that's where we're going to end this part of the video. Um, there will be a part two to this one once I get that rod, and we'll get the rest of it put back together. So thanks for watching, guys. Please leave a like, share, subscribe, and check back for more.